current and voltage in an electrical circuit. In this video we're going to be looking at what current is and what voltage or potential difference is. We're going to start off by thinking about metallic bonding. This is the kind of bonding, chemical bonding, that you get in metals. Um, so for example this could be a piece of copper. You'll notice that um, there are two things in my metallic bonding. There are these green positive metal ions. So if this was copper, these would be Cu plus ions. And around those positive metal ions are these negative delocalized electrons. And these electrons are no longer attached to your copper ions. And that means that these electrons are free to move. As a result, this material can conduct electricity. These electrons can move around, can flow. A flow of electrons is an electrical current. An electrical current is a movement or flow of these free electrons. So electrons that are no longer attached to ions through a conductor. So this is our metal wire. If we have a look inside it, when electricity passes through, you get this flow of negatively charged electrons. These electrons were already located in the wire. They're not coming from the battery. They were located in the metallic bonding in the metal. They're just being forced to move by the battery. As a result, we have an electrical current. So here is our circuit. We have a battery. The battery provides the energy to make the electrons move. Notice that the electrons are already in the circuit. They're located in the wire in the metallic bonds holding the metal of the wire together. Um, the electrical current is going to flow from the negative end of the terminal on the battery round to the positive end. The negative electron is repelled from the negative side of the battery and the negative electron is attracted to the positive side of the battery. So that's why we get this flow of charge moving round in that direction. An electrical current measures the flow of charge around the circuit. So if the flow is quite small, if there's not many electrons going past a given point, the current is going to be quite small. We'll have a look at that um, now. So in this example here, the flow of charge is relatively small. There's a very few number of electrons moving past this point. Therefore, we can say the flow of charge is quite small. We'll have a look at another example here where the flow of charge is much larger. Okay, Far more electrons moving past this given point, therefore the flow of charge is significantly bigger. Okay, The current is larger. The unit for current is amps. So this will have a larger number of amps than the previous circuit. Here are some questions I'd like you to have a think about. So pause the video and then I'll talk you really quickly through the answers. So the first question, where do the electrons come from in an electrical circuit? The electrons are already located in the wire of the electrical circuit from the metallic bonds holding the wire together. Where does the energy come from to make the electrons move around the circuit? The energy comes from the battery. So the battery is a store of energy. It's stored as chemical energy inside batteries. Um, and that energy is released and turns into kinetic energy when it moves the electrons around the circuit. We could also call that electrical energy. Why do batteries run out? Batteries run out because they run out of energy. They don't have any energy left to store inside them. So that's what they don't have any more of. Um, the chemicals inside the battery store that energy and once all the energy has been released it can no longer move the electrons around the circuit. We're going to think now about what potential difference is. Potential difference is sometimes referred to as voltage. Um, volts are certainly the unit you measure it in. And it's all about energy. So here we have a light bulb. It's a component in my circuit. And these are the two wires leading around to a battery. So when I turn the battery on, when I complete the circuit, electrons move along the wire towards the component. The electrons coming into the component have energy. Okay, That's the energy that makes them move. As they pass through the component, they lose some of that energy. The electrons transfer energy to the components. The electron does some work on the light bulb. It heats up the filament of the light bulb, making it glow. So when they come out of the other side of the component, they have less energy than the electrons had when they entered the light bulb or the component. 
The difference in the amount of energy that those electrons have is known as the potential difference or the voltage. Note the word difference. Okay, it's how much the energy has gone down by through that component. You can measure potential difference for a component, for a series of components, or the whole circuit. So how much energy the electrons lose going all the way through the circuit. The electrons will always have enough energy to get back to complete the circuit. Okay, so they don't leave and have no energy at all. They always have just enough energy to get round the circuit. So to summarise, potential difference is a measure of how much energy is transferred in part of a circuit. You can measure it for the whole thing or smaller sections of your circuit. Electrical current is the flow or the rate of flow of the electrical charge moving through your circuit. And these two things are related to each other. If you have a higher potential difference, it's very likely that you'll have a higher current.